There it is. Okay, the recording started. So one of the ways that you can get to forms is to go to forms.google.com and it looks a little bit differently because this is what's called the forms um, homepage. The reason I wanted to show you this is it's not only going to show your forms down here, but it's also going to have some templates um, up here that may save you some time. Um, this obviously, if you want to make a blank one, you would just click on this, but they give you some options so you wouldn't start from scratch. So if you were interested in any of these and they have a more that you can um, check out, this is what's called the template gallery. And you can edit any of these. They're just a starting point, just like any other template. So if you're interested in that, I wanted you to be aware that that existed, but you can't get to it. At least I'm not aware of a way to get to it through your um, drive. You actually need to go to the forms homepage. And most of the um, apps have a homepage, docs.google.com, um, uh, sheets.google.com. The only one that I'm aware of that doesn't take you to a page like this is um, drawings. When you do drawings.google.com, it just takes you to a new um, drawing. It automatically op opens it up. So this is a way that you can get to forms. Again, anytime you see the... Um, the three lines, I think people call it a hamburger. There's always more um, more options over here. Um, anytime you see the vertical ellipse or the three dots, uh, you can have additional options as well. And just like with everything else in Google, if there's one way to do it, there's usually two or three ways to get to the same thing. Another thing that you can do that not everybody is familiar with, if you do forms.google, Sorry, I can't type this morning. Forward slash create, I think it is. It'll automatically um, start a form for you. Just be careful because you can see from my icon right here, I have logged in uh, to this computer with multiple accounts. So this is mine and my husband's um, personal account. So you want to make sure that you are in the correct account when you do that. So you always want to be um, familiar with checking your tile up here in the corner. But that's another way that you can, uh, you can start one. All right. So um, the purpose of forms, and for those who were in the initial session, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Forms are always used for collection of data. Either they're for surveys or they're looking for... Um, like a formative or summative assessment. Um, you can use them for um, all sorts of things, but it's generally about collecting information. Um, Jacqueline, thank you for that. We, that yesterday was quite an experience handing out all those devices and you, you saved us quite a bit at Moyak, so that was awesome. But forms, whenever you see some questions, if you are gonna take the Google Level 2 certified exam, they want, uh, you to always see forms as a way to collect information, to gather information um, in a consistent way uh, across um, a large group. Um, you can also do some things with it, and we'll talk a little bit about it. I'm going to show my age, but anybody remember those uh, choose your own adventure stories from the library where you would read to a certain page, then you would choose this way or that way. And if you chose this action, then you would go to this page. If you chose that action, you would go to another page. So you can do some things with forms that are a little bit outside the box. And um, we're going to show you about how to go to uh, a different section based on your answer. So that allows you some differentiation. Um, if you've ever taken, like, I don't know if you remember the star test years ago, we did star reading. And if the student answered the question correctly, then they would be taken to a harder question. If they answered it incorrectly, they would be taken to an easier question. Um, those are called branching activities. And so you can do some things like that in Google Forms as well. So there's a lot more versatility than, than maybe um, teachers are initially aware of. Uh, but whenever you start a form, you know it's always gonna come up here as untitled. We'll start a new one. But I made a sample one last night to show you the sections. It's always going to come up untitled, so we're gonna we're just gonna make it. Um,
weather test. And then here's where you can include your description. Now, this is my only complaint about forms. Um, there's not a lot of formatting that you can do inside this description. And I've even tried workarounds where I've copied and pasted from a Google uh, Doc, but it doesn't give you a lot of um, formatting options within this text box. And I'm hoping that that's something that they will be responsive to and change at some point. But this is where you would you would type in any of your information um, that that explaining to them how you want them to complete it or um, how it will be counted or if there's a deadline or any of those things. You would type all that in here. Now, once you put a title here, as soon as you click up here, it's going to automatically assume that you want to use the same. You can change that at any time. It doesn't have to be the same. It's just going to try and um, the, the machine um, thinking is trying to make things easier for you. And then, as we said before, this is where you would add questions, import questions from other places, add titles and descriptions, add image, add a video, or add a section. So the purposes about it, uh, forms.google.com I showed you, the template gallery I showed you, oh, different ways to send. I'm going through a checklist here for those who are interested in taking the exam. So different ways to send. Instead of share, that was one of the questions I think on uh, on some one of the assessments. Instead of share, like it says in most of the other apps, it says um, send in this one. And this is where you go in here and you put your specification. So if you want them to collect the um, email addresses, it will, if you check that box. You can send via email, in which case you would type their names in here, the student names or the student group name, however you have it set up. You can um, embed the link, and this is what I've been using for our um, weekly PD chart. Um, I don't embed the whole thing, I just shorten it, but uh, you don't see that part is because it's hidden um, behind some text that I've hyperlinked it to. And you can also use an embed code. Again, you would copy this and paste it into your web page or somewhere else. Um, that's where embed codes are, are um, the most useful. And I'm not a Facebook person, but you can also send them directly from here to your Facebook um, or to Twitter if you want to get uh, information from a larger audience. So those are some of your options. Uh, you can also change the subject here, and you can also change the message here. I always pick the include form and email because it just keeps them from having to go one more place, and sometimes that just makes things life easier for everybody. And then add collaborators down here. So if I was going to, and be careful, when you add a collaborator, it means they can change your form. That's truly, collaboration means they, they have the same um, rights as you. So if I wanted to add Shelly, um, to this, and we were going to work together on this uh, assessment, say we're both fifth grade science teachers, then I'm going to keep that. That's always checked. I can uncheck it if I don't want her to be notified. And then I can add a message and say, um, please take a look at this and see what, and see what you think. And I can send a copy to myself if I want. Um, now, I'm not sure why you would do this down here, but it says you can click it and pre prevent editors from changing access to adding new people. I'm sure that there's some reason why that was added. Um, you do have the drop down, but as you see, if you're going to add a collaborator, the only thing they can do is edit. So I'm not really sure why that drop down is there. And then once I send, she's going to get an email alert. Um, so now I'm still the owner but she has editing rights and we can both um, work together on it. And you can add multiple people. Just understand that the more people you add, the more people have access to modify this. So if your PLC is working on a, on a common assessment, then this is a great way um, for you guys to be able to say, I really like the way these questions are worded. What if we added this there? Um, if you couldn't do it face to face. So those are some options. You can add collaborators. I think that was everything on this screen. Yep. Um, over here, these are your add-ons. We will talk a little bit about add-ons. Um, I only have one um, add-on for um, forms right now, and that was Form Ranger. But we can um, and email notifications. But uh, we'll talk about add-ons as we get a little bit farther into it. You can customize your theme, and you can change just the colors. You can change um, the basic font. Uh, you can choose an image 
And I think uh, Lindsay was talking about the other day, she likes to use Canva um, to make uh, certain banners and you could import it here. Uh, the difference between um, a link or hiding behind text in the embed code, I'm not sure what the, the huge difference is. Um, I just know that, or Shelly's answering it, embed will force the form to show up in the um, email or web page as opposed to them having to click on it. So I just know that when you're dealing with web pages, generally we, we like to put um, embed codes. And when you're installing your uh, calendar, you do have to use the embed code uh, as the only way to link it on your web page. So here you can put um, a header or image, <clears throat> but you also have some choices to pick from. So since it's weather, I don't know, we'll pick this one and say insert, but you can go to upload or you can pick um, pictures from your drive, which Nobody wants the technology stuff right at the top. Although, look, there's a peeps. I could put a, <laughs> I could put a peeps at the top. Um, or you could upload images here. But I think we're going to stick with the globe. But you have a lot of um, options. And those, the photos that you saw come up, if you have it linked to your phone, it's going to pull up uh, any photos that you have stored that are linked to your Google Photos. And it just changes this banner right here. Again, I can still change the other colors. Uh, if I choose to, um, and that just changes this color right here, background color, if I want it darker. Again, that's up to you, and it's just what you're comfortable with or what you like. Um, you can always, and I do recommend always testing what it's going to look like because I saw a form that was very detailed, but because of the question types they used, a lot of the text was actually cut off um, when you saw it in uh, view form. Also, this lets you go in, if you want to fill out your own form, like you want to be a respondent in your own um, group, then if you just click on this, you can fill it out as a participant and it will go into your uh, Google Sheet. You don't have to um, go outside, go to the link and so forth. Under settings, again, you can select whether you're going to collect the email addresses, whether you're going to restrict the users, um, here, like you don't want any outside respondents. If you're going to put it on the web page, you have to unclick that. You can click here if you want them to only be able to put one response. But again, if people, if you have this unchecked, I can use my Curry Tuck Gmail. I can use my personal Gmail. Um, so some people can respond more than once if they choose to. If you don't have this clicked, then sometimes you'll wind up with people responding over and over because if their email is anything like mine, they forget that they've taken care of it. The email is still in there. They think they need to go back and do it. So sometimes we get people responding uh, multiple times. They can't edit it after submission unless you check this. And um, if you don't want the people who are responding to see the summary charts, then you just leave it unchecked. And most of the time, this is the default that comes up anyway. You can do a response receipt. And that's just basically... So I'm going to tell you, it's basically going to um, force a copy of their answers to go back to their email. So if you've ever filled out a survey and then you've gotten an email alert, this is a survey you just um, this is a survey you just filled out, and here were your answers. The way you present it, you can show a progress bar. I know everybody's done surveys where you've seen that across the bottom. Sometimes that helps if you got a lot of questions, because then you're like, am I ever getting to the end of the survey? You can show full the question order if it's a quiz. Uh, you can show the link um, to submit another response. And we've done that like when we've used this as a, a sign in for PD um, at the county. And then this is where you put your confirmation. Thank you so much for completing the survey. Um, we appreciate your input, whatever, whatever, whatever you wanted to say there. This is the, um, this is the uh, quiz link. So if I'm going to turn this into a quiz, I have to toggle that on. Once I toggle that on, I get all these other choices. So this is when you have your kids in the classroom and they're doing uh, an assessment and you don't want them going outside of that tab and uh, looking up answers, then you would click this. Um, but in our current situation, I'm not sure I would try to use that with remote learning because like Lindsay said, uh, I think in the initial session that she and Tom did, they have their phone, so if they're going to Google the answers, they're going to find a way to Google their answers. Um, and then release the grade immediately after submission or 
you might want to wait until everybody's done, in which case you would just uncheck that or later after manual review. Um, and then you have these options as well. Do you want them to see their missed questions, the correct answers or the point values, or is it something that they're going to have them like, is this a pre-assessment and they're going to do is this again at the end of the, the um, uh, unit, in which case you might not want them to see their missed questions and correct answers. That's all up to you. And we're going to say now, once I say that it's kind of changed the uh, underlying uh, information here. So I'm not going to worry about the description. We're just going to go ahead and put a question in. And I'm going to say um, what type of weather I'm associated with. Type of weather is associated with cumulonimbus clouds. Now, as you're typing, like um, Mr. Andrew Kovic said, it's going to try to determine what kind of question it is, but you have all of these options. You can change it to any of these. That's entirely up to you. I'm going to leave it as multiple choice and say um, thunderstorms. Mm. All right, so I'm going to pick my three choices. Now, because I've turned it into a quiz, I have this little uh, link here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to choose my point value. I can make them whatever, how many, however many points I want. Here it's going to ask me to pick what the correct answer is, and it happens to be thunderstorms. Here I can add some feedback. So this is a fairly new feature. So if I want to say for when they answered it wrong, please review... The Cornell notes about the three cloud types. Or whatever. You can also link something here. So I could link to my Google Drive or my Google Classroom, um, the section where we were working on the three cloud types, the three main cloud types. Um, I could also, and I don't want to click add over here, I could also add a YouTube video directly in um, from there. Either I can search or if I already have the URL, I can just type it right in. So I can do that in my response for you got it wrong. Um, I also have the option to include a response if they got it right, which I think is kind of a cool thing. Uh, a lot of times um, kids are like, oh, I'm only going to hear something if... Uh, if it's not good. So this is a way to kind of counteract that um, mentality. Uh, again, you can include a link or you can include um, a YouTube video here, but that's a fairly new feature and I think that's pretty awesome. And then once you click done, you'll see that I can copy it, I can trash it, I can make it required if I want. If I make it required, the kids can't go anywhere else until they finish this or the respondent can't go anywhere else if it's a survey. Now, you see these options when you do the the vertical ellipse right here in the side of the question, I can go to section based on answer. So if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have to add a new section. So that's when you get the section one and section two. And so here's a sample that I made last night. So basically what happens is you're going to set up sections. You're going to say, this is my question. If they answer it correctly, I'll click on this, if I say go to section based on answer, then I'm going to get these initial choices over on the side. So for the correct answer, I want them to go to section three. And you can see this is the drop down. I can continue to the next section. I can go to one, section two, section three, or submit the form. In this case, I want them to go to section three. They got it correct, so I want them to go to the next section. So if they got it wrong, these two, I wanted them just to go to the, the very next section, which in this case, I've included um, a YouTube video about the three main cloud types. I've been included a header here, just um, that was a recommended practice online that you include um, headers so that it just makes it uh, easier for people to follow and understand what's going on. And then I included a copy of the same question over again. So I want them, if they got it wrong, to watch this video and I want them to answer, try to answer the question again. So that's um, an option. Um, and then the third section I had down here was if they answered it correctly, then they're going to go on to Global Winds and they have another question. 
So that's basically how you use the go to section. It can get quite complex, um, but you you have a lot of uh, opportunities with using this and they recommend uh, going slow and just using it with a few questions at a time. And I'm going to pull up um, Shake Up Learning has a good blog post on this. Uh, I think it's called um, I think it's called differentiation. But I'll see if I can get it this way. How to differentiate questions in Google Forms. So down here, she had a good visual. Let's see if I can make it any bigger. So this is what's called branching. So when you're going to use this go-to section based on answer, you need to have some kind of prep. This is not something you're going to be able to do kind of off the cuff. So you need to know what your questions are. And then you don't have to type out everything. Just know which one's going to be your correct answer. For instance, for number one, I can tell this was my correct answer. If I answer this one, then it's going to take me directly to two. But if I answered these two incorrectly, it's going to take me to a section that says review the skill. So you just need to do some, some prep ahead of time. You need to kind of know where you want them to go. Um, with that being said, if you're going to use this go-to section with students, um, like I, I was intending to try and use it with my gifted students um, before I moved into this position, there's going to have to be some thoughtful um, planning put into it because if they're going to do that, they need to know if they get to this section and, and uh, the person taking it chooses A or B pathway, then what's going to be the next step? And if they choose A or B after that, what's going to be the next step? So they have to have, uh, they have to kind of have it all mapped out. Um, in advance all the options. So I don't want to overwhelm anybody, but I wanted you to see this sample that she had. Um, and again, everything I found online just recommends starting out slow. Just try it with a couple. And um, you can always test it out yourself. So when you go in here, you can go to view. And what kind of weather would you expect? So I'm going to answer it incorrectly. And it takes me to the video and then it takes me to the question again. So I'm going to answer it correctly this time. And then it took me to the next section. So what are the types of global winds that affect our weather? In this case, I'm going to um, submit the correct answer, put the correct answer and hit submit. Now, the way I had that set up is it's going to submit the, go down here, you'll see when I click on this one, um, it was at the end, but I can do go to section based on. And for this, if they answered it correctly, I could just go to submit form. So that means as soon as they answer that when they're done. Um, but I could add another section and say if these two answers were incorrect, then they could go to another video and answer the question again. Um, so that's, I know that um, can be a little bit overwhelming if you're using it for the first time, but it's a great feature. Um, you can also, and the way I did the, the question over again, um, is I just duplicated, I just copied the question. So I just clicked copy. Remember, you can move these around right here where you see, it looks like the six little uh, dots. It looks like a three by two array for us math teachers. Um, and you can just click there. You see that it turns into the cross arrows and you can move them up and down and move things around. Um, so anyway, that was a sample. Um, your original answer so you know that if you miss them. Uh, will it let you know your original answer? Uh, no, it will not. It will just take you to that section. So if the student answered it incorrectly, it's going to take them to the video. They're going to watch it and then they're going to have a chance to answer it again. But you can change that. Like I could go back here and then the answer key, I can give answer feedback. So I can change that, Melissa, and I could put this here. So I could put this here and um, give them some feedback before they go to that. So that's entirely up to you. Um, I just didn't have any answer feedback for that one. So that's that's one of the biggest uh, advanced things that you can do with forms that I'm aware of that it would be, uh, you know, the most beneficial to us in our position. Um, I will say that when you do the, the branching, your, um, your spreadsheet is going to look a mess. So when you go over here and you open up your spreadsheet, <clears throat> if students are going in and answering, you know, this question and this question and going to that section, um, this is not necessarily going to be as clean 
uh, as you would like. So just know that know that up front. Uh, these are more, um, I see these more as a formative um, assessment style, which is kind of where we are right now with everything. Uh, so, but it does, since you can't have that face-to-face -face interaction as much as we would like or as much as we're used to, I think adding that answer feedback and going to a different section and having some reteach moment uh, is a very powerful. So if you feel like uh, jumping into that, you certainly can. Also understand that, say here, I wanted to, let me show you how, Let's see if we can do it. So say I want to insert an image and I want to go to Google image search and I want to look for Cumulo Nimbus clouds. So say I wanted to include one so that the kids have a visual. Remember when we talked about Cumulo Nimbus clouds? Um, here are some exam here's an example then it's going to insert an image as a whole nother section. And you can move that around. Not a whole nother section, I shouldn't say. It's a whole, it's a whole nother piece, but it's not another section, excuse me. But I can move that, say I want to move that above um, the question so they actually see the cumulonimbus cloud. And then I can resize it if I want to, say I don't want it taking up all that space, but I want them to remember what it looks like. And then they have a question, what kind of weather would you expect? Um, so you can do some of those things over here on the side and um, kind of make it fit your, your means. Um, does anybody have any questions about, um, is there a way to enter an equation into the multiple choice sections? I think so. Um, but you might have to play around with it a little bit, especially if you're using like exponents. Uh, sometimes that can get a little twitchy. Um, what I try to do, and I, I do hope they make some more improvements to Google Forms. Like I said, with the formatting, it gets a little squirrely. Um, they, I don't have as much functionality with the formatting within the text parts as, as I would like. But sometimes I do try to copy and paste. I would have a Google Doc open. Um, I would type in what I want, try to format it within that, and then try to copy and paste it in and see if the formatting will stay. Um, sometimes that's a workaround that you can use, and that might work with some of your math. Uh, yes, you can use the um, caret key as well. Hopefully your kids are familiar with that. Uh, fractions are another thing. Fractions don't always uh, show up in, a, in an easy way um, on here, and sometimes kids get a little confused when they see the numbers directly next to each other with a the um, divisor in between. So, um, so there are some workarounds. And again, they're constantly looking for changes. And believe me, they have been extremely responsive to suggestions teachers have made uh, during this uh, COVID remote learning because they've already made some, some changes to Google Meet. Um, and there have been some great uh, extensions that have, um, are going to help us quite a bit. So let me see if I covered everything. Can give feedback, responses. Oh. Um, one thing they pointed out is when you go over here, again, you can toggle off when you don't want to accept any more responses. Um, you do have your summary. Um, and then you can go to question by question. I want to see what responses were made um, for each one, or I can go see individuals. Now, since I didn't uh, collect um, individual names, <clears throat> there's not a drop down here, um, but I can print them but I can also delete them. And uh, the example I heard online was that if you were doing a survey or something and you had gone through and you had filled it out just to make sure that you, it worked the way you wanted, you could go in and delete that one. Or if you wanna use the same form over again and you don't wanna copy it uh, necessarily um, because you don't need the original data, then you can just open the form up, delete uh, the last group's data and start fresh with the same um, form so you don't have to recreate the wheel. So those are some other options. Oh, and <clears throat> when you're in the response tab up here, the vertical ellipse, the three dots, you can get email notifications for new responses. So you don't have to remember to go back and keep checking it. 
Um, you can select where it's going to go. That's just going to take you to the same place where if you click on this, um, well, we already made one, so it's not going to show, but it says create this um, spreadsheet or uh, select a new one. This just brings that box back up. If I decide I want to um, save it somewhere else, I can do that from here. Um, I can download the responses as a CSV file. And if you're not used to working with CSV files and you don't need to um, use that to import it into another document, then you wouldn't have a need to mess with that. But sometimes when you're importing data, uh, you, what you're importing it into will only accept it in certain formats. And CSV is uh, one of the ones that's most common. Um, you can print all of the responses if you need paper copies. And again, you can delete them from here as well. So those are just some, some of the other options with sheets. Um, let's see. Oh, um, yeah, some of the other suggestions were if they answered the question, um, they could get increasingly harder based on answering the questions correctly. Again, we already talked about choose your own adventure. If any of you are interested in uh, digital EDU breakouts, um, <clears throat> they do have some on the breakout EDU website, obviously, but some of those are free. Most of them are under the subscription, but you can go through and there's a lot of things online and a lot of uh, helpful videos for going in and making your own breakout EDUs for your kids um, using forms. Okay, I think that was it for forms. Does anybody have any questions that we haven't gone over for some advanced features? Looks like we're good. All right, so we will get out of weather. All right. And again, um, Shake Up Learning is uh, one of the <clears throat> people that I follow. She um, She's a Google certified educator and she has lots of good things on her blog, just like um, Ditch That Textbook, Matt Miller, or um, Eric Kurtz with, with Control Alt uh, Achieve. Those are the three that I go to when generally when I'm looking for something um, about Google because I know that they're all um, certified trainers and um, they do a lot with uh, trying to stay ahead um, of what we need in the classroom. So those are three options that you might want to consider keeping a, a look on or going to when you need some information. So again, when you're going to Sheets, which is what we're going to do next, you can go to um, New and go to Sheets here and do um, a blank sheet or you can go to a template from here or you can also go to sheets.google.com and you'll go to the Sheets homepage. The Sheets homepage has these templates up here on the top, which they may be useful to you, um, they might not, and then it'll also show you um, which uh, sheets that you've had open and it's generally gonna be um, from the most recent, but you can alter the way they look, you can alter the order that they're in, um, or you can um, uh, open a file picker, which I'm, not sure what that is. I haven't done a lot with that because you can search just as I think you can search just as easily up here. But this is just another gives you basically what you see in your drive here in this um, window. Is what it looks like to me. So again, Google loves to give you multiple ways to get to the same um, result. So and see your tile is up here so that you know that you're in your school account. So we're going to go back over here. We're going to open a um, sheet. <clears throat> and again, since this is a advanced one, I'm not going to go over all of the, the um, options you have, but uh, we'll go through some of them just to give us all kind of a, a firm foundation. So anything that's going across are your rows, anything that's coming down are your columns. It's like playing Battleship a little bit. So like your cell, these are all called cells. So this cell is C5. You're going to need to know that when you're using it for functions. Um, we call them formulas, but they call them functions in here. Um, and notice when you select it, it darkens it a little bit to help you with tracking. So this is E8. This is G21 um, and so on. Uh, one thing we didn't, uh, well, not sure whether they went over in um, the session because I know we were having some technical difficulty that day, but 
you can add more sheets down here and it's just going to keep adding them to the side and then you can click double click here and you can name them um, whatever you need and you can go back and change them at any time you can also reorder them so i can decide what order i have them in or i can just go um, over this is a very nice feature especially i use it a lot when we're uh, doing information for all the schools so I could have a central, a Griggs, a Jarvisburg tab and have everybody's information separated out, but it's all in one file. Um, and this just shows it in uh, a list form, because if you've got a huge, like if you go past this window, you can add, keep adding. I don't even know how many you can get to, but I've not gotten to an end one. Um, so if you have lots of tabs down here, lots of sheets in this called a workbook, then um, you can do this three, like the hamburger the three lines, and then your whole options will come up here so you can go directly so you don't have to scroll and scroll and scroll. Um, so that's that's the basic um, part that we, we just kind of need to know when we're starting. Again, if you want to um, create one right from the Omnibox from your URL, you're going to go to sheets.google.com forward slash create, and it's going to automatically um, bring, open up a, an empty sheet. Just check and make sure that you're in the the account that you want it to be saved in. Um, so I think you show you saw the uh, I don't know if anybody wants any more information on those templates, but you were able to see those. You can import data. Um, but most of the time we're um, we're starting from scratch, but you can import data from other places. Uh, that's how forms and sheets works so nicely together when you click that little green symbol um, for sheet when you're in the form responses, that's what it's doing. It's automatically pulling those um, directions and I mean that information in for you. Um, all right, so this is one that's already been set up as a sample. So since we're in education, this is an easy one for us to understand. Um, this is just some made up kids' names and some sample uh, information. Um, this is not the easiest to read uh, when we just have it in there. So when you're to the point that you, you know, have your information in and you want to start making it uh, more user friendly, I guess, um, you can go in and change lots of things on here. So if I'm going to format and I want to alternate colors like in our old grade books, if any of you remember the old grade paper grade books we used to have, I'm just going to pick purple. Um, you can go in and I can select options here um, and it will alternate from everything that I've selected. I selected top to bottom. Now, if you want the whole uh, sheet, the whole um, sheet on this um, workbook, you're going to click on this tie, this rectangle right between uh, a, column A and row one, and that's going to select the whole thing. And then you could select it and it's, um, let me go back, it should go all the way down. I select the whole thing. I remember control Z is um, awesome because it will, oh, let's want to do the whole sheet. I guess I messed myself up. So A1, you shouldn't have to put this in, but um, since I started with just six. Anyway, you can uh, select the whole sheet and you sh should be able to do it directly from it. I'll bring up one that the other one that we're going to use. So if you select the whole thing, you get a format and go to alternating colors. Say I just want to select this and click done. It does the whole sheet instead of just that section. So anyway, you can see it. So I'm going to do alternating colors here. Pick something different. And then, um, let's see, of course you can highlight, click and drag. I can go here and I can center um, my headers. I can make them bold. Um, I can center all my scores if I want. Uh, and I can just pretty it up. Oop, I missed a, call. I missed a row, so let's fix that. 
So I can also do, let's see, center headers, bold borders. Oh, um, all of the grid lines that you see here are only for you. That's why it's so faint. And some people get frustrated when they get it looking the way they want it and they print it in their own grid lines. So if you want to add the grid lines, you decide where you want them. This um, is one of the places that you can go and it just brings another drop down. So you decide how you want the borders to look, um, how you want the lines to look, and how fat you want the lines, how thick you want the lines, um, and the colors. So these are your options here. Um, and you have a lot of uh, variety. I prefer the lines. I think it makes it easier to read and, and things are clearly defined. Um, I also like the alternating colors. It just makes it easier to track across the page. But those are a couple of things. And of course, resizing. Anytime you come up here and you see in between these columns and it turns into the arrows, you can resize um, all you like. And then I'll show you on one about text wrapping. Let me get it right over here. Like, this is where, oops, sorry, Carrie. Um, this is where when you have things that run over, it can cause problems and um, cut off some of your text, which can be aggravating. And used to be that you didn't have this option, so people started using um, tables inside uh, for inside docs instead of um, sheets. But see how this is requesting a recording to be sent and it goes across. As long as there's nothing in these cells over here to the right, it's going to be fine. You can still read it. You just scroll over and you keep reading until it ends. But if I were to put something in here, then it's going to cut it off. Now, when I click on this cell, I can still see it right here, exactly what it is. But who wants to click on that to see it? So what you can do, I would do it for the whole column, but you can do it cell by cell. Then you come up here and you're going to go to text wrapping and I'm going to ask it to wrap the text and it's going to expand the cell to include all of the text. And it doesn't matter if I have anything here or not, but I can also expand this if I don't want it to be as stretched out. Um, and that's an option of um, when to use text wrapping. Let me get back over here. Um, and you do have um, some other uh, options when you're doing the color coding. You could see that when that, that um, menu came up over here on the side, you have lots of other things that you can get really specific in, but um, it just depends on, on what you prefer. So uh, formatting numbers. So when you put things in, again, the machine learning is always going to try to anticipate what it is. So you can come up here and you can decide, I want these cells to only be dates, or I want these cells to be time formatted, or I want these cells to be um, whatever it is you want them to be. Now, for those of us who are um, math teachers, um, sometimes it can be aggravating when you're putting in fractions in a cell because the system wants to turn that into a date. <clears throat> so um, sometimes that can get a little aggravating and you might have to be more um, deliberate in what you're coming up with first and say, I want these cells to all be, instead of having the computer um, try to choose for you, even after you go back, sometimes it gets a little temperamental. Um, but you also have more uh, options down here than just this. Either These are the ones that are most commonly used. And as long as this is checked, the computer is going to try to decide what you're trying to put in um, for you. And sometimes you just want something to be taken as, as just as you typed it. Like, don't try to change it. Just let me know exactly what it is. Um, <clears throat> percentages, and I'll show you on one of these, if I choose percentage um, up front or if I try to change it over here, it can get a little wonky, um, but I'll show you an example. So that's how you can uh, format for your numbers, wrap text, we already did. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to show you the difference between sorting and filtering. So if I select, we'll do um, a sort first. So when you're at the column headings, you notice you when you hover over with your mouse, you get these little drop down. It looks like a little upside down triangle, um, and you get all of these other options. Well, I can sort um, from A to Z or Z to A or... I, I have all of these other choices here. Most commonly, we do things like sorting. So 
I'm going to say it looks like uh, it looks like it's already Z to A. So I'm going to do A to Z. Now, when I do A to Z, it'll move the data with it that's attached to the student name. And it didn't always used to do that in spreadsheets. Um, you used to have to use databases um, to keep the data linked across. But now they're they're pretty consistent. So Haley's are going to be the same um, as they were when it was sorted the other way. But notice how it has student assignment because it did uh, this one along with everything else. So it put student down here under Sophie. So I don't want that. So when you go up here and you highlight this row and then you go to view, you can go to freeze. And I want this to stay. So I want that to stay exactly where it is. So if you've ever had a sheet open and it goes on for days and days and days, but when you get down here, you can no longer see what the headers are and you have to keep scrolling up to see what in the world was that column. I can't keep it straight, then um, you can freeze this so that it'll stay placed. You can also do the same thing, say I don't want the student names to move, say it goes on um, horizontally for, for columns and columns, then I can go in here and uh, freeze the first column. So now you can see it's changed a little bit, the thickness of this line here and line here, so it's going to keep the, um, the kids' names from not moving. I can go back and forth and column um, B and on will move, but this column will stay the same. All right, so a sort. That's how we do a sort. Um, usually we do alphabetized, but uh, there are other ways that you can do it. I could sort this column, um, even though in one of the Google level one uh, tasks, I think it had you do it with numbers, but it has sort A to Z or Z to A, and you're thinking, well, that doesn't sound right because it should be A, we're math teachers, right? Ascending to descending, <laughs> um, but it doesn't say that. So in, in sheets, say I want to see um, these Z to A or A to Z, then it's going to take these and do it from um, smallest to largest. So notice it shifted the kids' names over here according to the score. So say I just wanted to see all of the kids who um, didn't do well to those who really excelled at that assignment. Um, so that's sorting. And sorting is basically just uh, moving the data around. It affects all the data, but it moves it around however you're asking. So let's see. Okay, then filter. All right, now filters are a little bit different. So if you think about filters, like in your kitchen, I'm not a coffee drinker, but you know, regular um, coffee machines, you put a filter in because you don't want the grounds in your coffee. Well, filters inside sheets is kind of the same way. It pulls out um, what you want and it, and it catches the stuff that you don't. So I'm going to select the whole sheet. I'm going to go to data and I'm going to go to create a filter. Now, when I do that, you'll see that the upside down triangle changes to this upside down lines. So I'm going to say that I want to, I want to filter, and these are all the options based on what's in that column already. I want to see all of the kids um, that scored a 100 on this assignment because they're the ones who tested out and are going to get the um, enrichment packet. So it hasn't. And, and this freaks people out a little bit. It hasn't, my data has not gone away. It's still there. I've just filtered it for what I want. I just want to see how many kids on that first test tested out or the pretest and are going to do the enrichment activity while I work with the other kids. Conversely, I can go back and say, I want to know which kids I need to pull for small groups that did not do well. And I'm going to select those scores. So now I've got this set, I need to come back and I need to do some re-engagement with these kids to see why they didn't do well on that assignment. So filtering can be helpful um, when you're in a spreadsheet like this. And we used to use these for grade books before we got um, Power Teacher Pro. So um, this, was, this was my first uh, digital um, grade book that I set up for myself was in a, a sheet. And then you can always turn the filters off. Go back to data and turn the filter off and all your data comes back. Um, and you can do it for any of these columns and you can do it for multiple columns um, at the same time. It just depends on what you're looking for. So those are filters. Oh, also, um, when you're up here, say you only want, um, you only want to show um, one particular column um, they don't need to see these. You can go up here, you can right click, 
and you can um, hide these columns. It'll change this up here and show you the um, arrows forward and back. Um, and you can bring them all back, but um, so they're still there, but you can hide them temporarily. And sometimes if you're going to print something, then you might want to hide some columns because they're not really that important to you. The student number column may not be as important to you. Uh, the date column, it, it depends on what, what kind of data you have in there. So you can hide it temporarily without deleting it and then get it down so it'll all print on one page or whatever it is you're trying to do. I'm not sure why you would want to do this, but you can publish your data. Let's see where it is. Publish to the web. So if you had a set of data, obviously not kid data, um, you can go in here and click publish to the web um, and select the entire document. We only have one sheet. If we had more down here, there would be more options here. And you can decide how you want it published. Um, there's that CSV again. Uh, tab separated values are some of the other um, form uh, file types that you may need depending on what you're working in. The same thing for open document spreadsheet. Um, for those Microsoft users, they should be really familiar with seeing this XLS, that Excel file, and of course a PDF. Um, but you could publish it if you wanted. And then publish content and settings down here. You can have these options to change things as well. That was something that was mentioned on one of the checklists for Google Level 2 um, certification. Add sheets on the bottom. We already did that. How to name and reorder. Let's see. Oh, protecting information on the sheet. So say you're going to um, share this information with somebody, but you don't want them to be able to change it. <clears throat> and uh, I don't want somebody to be able to um, change, say, this column uh, for whatever reason. I'm trying to think of exactly that. I could see maybe if there are sheets on the bottom, say you have multiple sheets, a situation where you had two sheets and say, this was for uh, first bell and this was for second bell. And I, and I only want, you know, the other teachers that teach math with me to have access to this. And you can modify who has that access. So I can protect um, the sheet, or I can protect the column, but it makes more sense to me to protect the sheet. And then you're going to um, enter the description. You have to name it, so whatever you whatever you need to name it. <clears throat> Bell one, and it's going to be the sheet here because I didn't I didn't name it down here. Let's change this name and see if it changes over there. Hmm. Let's go here and do protect sheet. All right, bell one, we're going to call it bell one here. Um, you can accept for certain uh, cells. Again, I'm not sure why you would do that, but you can. And then um, you're going to go here to set permissions and going to decide who can have access to that. So you can either show them a warning when editing it or restrict those who can edit the page. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to add Shelly and say Shelly and I are teaching um, first bell together and so uh, are teaching second bell together so I don't want her changing the first bell um, tab. Um, if you've ever had anybody go in and things you've shared with them uh, then get <laughs> changed it can be a little frustrating to try and get it back. So this is one way in sheets that you can kind of lock it down a little bit. You have more flexibility in what you can give them access to actually pieces within the file. Whereas in um, forms, if you, if they're a collaborator, they're, they're a collaborator on the whole thing. If they're docs, it's the same thing. You're either letting them view it, you're letting them edit it, or you're letting them comment on it. Um, here you have more functionality within the, the sheet itself. And so share with one person, notice this is grayed out. And I'm not sure why, if you're going to go in here and you're going to set this, why you would say don't give access. But um, So now she would be able to see it, but she won't be able to change it. Um, so that's protecting a sheet. Now, if I just wanted to protect a column, again, I'm not exactly sure why, but it does have that option. And since I highlighted this, that as soon as I open it up, it's going to put those um, whole column where it says C, colon C that's saying that whole column is going to be permit, um, protected. Again, it always asks you to name it for whatever reason, and then you can set your permissions here. But that's protecting 
uh, information on a sheet. Uh, I think that was it on that one. Oh, um, one other thing about sorts, we did the whole document, but if for some reason you wanted to do um, a custom sort, we'll talk about functions, and um, they call them formulas, but we call them formulas, but they call them functions, and here the sigma, you'll go over here, and it gives you all of these different um, options. These are the most commonly used, but then you have categories down here that open up even more um, ways. So if you wanted to just do a separate sort, you can, anytime you're going to do a function, you're going to hit um, enter and then use whatever. That, that just lets the, the computer know, the system know that you're getting ready to um, input a function. But we're just going to, we're going to go sort and then we're going to, I'm going to select this. Let's see, equal sort. Wait a minute, sorry. Let me get rid of that. Okay, again, again, I'm not sure why you would need this, but it, it was one of the the um, things on the checklist, so we're going to cover it. So if you do equal sort and you do parentheses, and I come over here and highlight whatever it is and hit enter, then it's going to take that data over here and it's going to sort it. Um, in ascending order. Uh, again, I'm not sure why you would need that, but it's an option. It leaves your data over here the same. And when you go back to this cell where I put the initial function in, you're going to see that it's listed C2 to C17 because that's what I was uh, sorting over here in this column. All right, so um, some of the ones that are most commonly used are obviously sums, average, and so forth. We're going to do an average. So we're going to put average. We're going to do, we'll start over here. We'll do average. Oh, and uh, one other thing I forgot to tell you that say you want to change the um, heading uh, direction. Again, showing my age. Say you want it to look like this, like our old school paper pencil grade books. Um, you can change the alignment direction of the text. Um, to shorten up your columns because it's always going to try to adjust to the the uh, size of the text up top. So that's an option. Let's see what else do you have over here? Pivot tables we're going to get to. Yep, that's on the list. Okay, so um, you can change the um, alignment up here. So I'll try to speed up. Uh, there's a lot, sorry, that you can do in these. So if I'm going to do average, I'll show you how to add it right here. So average, and it's asking you where you want to take that from. I'm going to hit enter, and then it's going to give me the average of that data for that student. I can highlight and control D, and that's going to copy the formula all the way down and adjust the cell's numbers. So that's a great feature. It's not going to do the same thing down here. If I wanted to do um, average and I wanted this information for the, I can't copy it to the um, right. It doesn't work that way. But uh, anyway, so those are averages. You can decide how many decimals you want up here. Um, if you just want it to round up, um, you can do that. Same thing over here. I can decide how many decimals. I want, or if I just want it simple like that. All right. Oh, spark lines um, was one of the other things. So you highlight this. Let me see. I haven't used these a lot. So insert. What is it? Spark line is basically it's going to put this little um, graph in this in this uh, cell I have to find where it is on here anyway, I don't see it up here but anyway spark line if you're asked on the exam it's going to put a little line graph in this cell for whatever data you highlighted and that's what spark lines are oh I think you have to type it all right so enter spark line 
And then I'm going to select this data and press enter. And then it's going to show you that information graphed um, in that cell. Data validation, select the um, data validation is how you can add um, options. So if I go up here and I do format, no, data validation. So say I want to change this header and I want to do a list of items. So I want to say whether this is a quiz, a test, I don't think you're supposed to put it, a test or, or an assignment. And I'm going to click save. Now you see there's a drop down here. So say I want this, uh, say this was a test. Then I have the drop down option to change what's going to show up there. Um, then I could do it all the way across and I could have this as a quiz and I could have this as an assignment or whatever. Um, that's data validation. Those are some great choices. You can do it anywhere in here. It just seems to make sense to be up, up at the top. Um, obviously charts. So if I select the data that I want and I go up to insert and chart, the computer is going to try to figure out what it wants, uh, what I want based on what I've highlighted. You have all of these options over here, this drop down, and I can say, no, I really don't like that. Um, maybe I like this one better. I can change what's on the um, x-axis. I can change what's on the, um, what, what are, these are. I can change the color coding um, within them. But I can also go down here and click Explore. And since I happen to be on a chart inside a sheet, it's going to try to uh, determine what um, I'm looking for. And it's going to give me lots of options. If I want to, I can go in here and say, I really like the look of that. I'm going to insert that. So I can pull that over immediately from here. I can also um, type questions in here and get answers. Um, how do I add a spark line? Oops, maybe I should spell it correctly. Um, <clears throat> didn't understand my question. Anyway, you're supposed to be able to put a question in here and then get information about it. So once this is highlighted, you see that I can move it anywhere I want. It's not um, going to change my data in the back at all. I can also do this three dots, the vertical ellipse, and I can uh, move it to its own sheet. And that's going to add it down here. So now I have bell one, I have my chart, and I have my sheet. I can go back and do the same thing with this. And I can move it to its own sheet um, if I want. And then I can move these around however I want. Um, but that's entirely up to you. So charts is just a matter of going in there and, and playing around with it. Um, and we'll do conditional formatting real quick and then pivot tables. Sorry, I'm trying to speed up. So conditional formatting is very helpful for me. I like to color code things, but who wants to go back through all of these cells? So if you go down here to conditional formatting, you can make rules up over here on the side. So say I want to, if um, I want to know if it's greater than or equal to 90, I'm going to turn that color to blue. So I know that those kids are, um, doing really well. None. One of those is too many. Okay, I'm going to add another rule. I want if it is uh, less than 60, I want those to be uh, red because those are the kids I'm concerned about. If it is um, between Say it's between, I think, between 80 and 89. Um, those kids are doing all right. And then I can go in here and I can make that green and say, you guys are doing a good job. And then I could add one more for the other one and say, in between um, 79 and 60 and 79. I can make that yellow or whatever your color coding is. It's entirely up to you. But that just means any data that I add will automatically be held to these rules. 
Um, so if you want to kind of be able to see where your kids are, like look at all these reds on, on assignment five. There's obviously something that went on with that. That may be uh, what I need to, um, you know, redo. Maybe assignment five was a wash and we just need to reteach that lesson and have another uh, assessment tool um, because uh, the majority of the kids did not get it. So I like color coding, uh, especially within data. Um, it gives me a quick visual of what's what's happening. So that's conditional formatting. You don't have to be as detailed as this. Um, it's just the way I used to go back and, and hand do it. And then pivot tables. So pivot tables normally are with a huge set of data and you want to pull out specific um, data. You want to see what's the significance from a large data set. So when you go in here, and this is a sample set, I'm going to go in and I'm going to um, insert, let's see, here it is. Instead of under insert, it's under data. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click pivot table. I want the whole sheet. So yes. And this is where you, it's going to automatically say new sheet and you kind of want to leave it that way. I don't want to put a pivot table in my own, um, in my current um, sheet. I want it in a new sheet. So it's going to create it down here. And you can see I've been playing around. That's why I have this other, this other one over here. I need to leave that. I was playing around with it last night. So you're going to open pivot table. It's going to go into a new tab over here on the bottom. So you can see your information is still safe. It hasn't done anything. And then it's going to, if you want the grid lines because you don't see them here, um, that you can go up to view and put the grid lines back. That's up to you. So over here are your options. So your range is the whole sheet, and that's what I want. Um, it's going to give you some suggestions, but I'm just going to go through and show you. So for rows, you can pick any of these columns. I don't know why it shows you all the blank ones, except that I had the whole sheet selected. So if you just did where the data was, this wouldn't show up. So say for rows, I'm going to pick age. Say for columns, I'm going to pick period. Say for values, I'm going to pick um, age again. And then say for filter, I'm going to click um, gender. So you can change what you're looking at from this whole set of data about seniors and their ages and what period um, class they're in um, to look at it in this way. Now, when you go back to, let's see, I'll go back a few. So this just shows you the ages that are in the um, spreadsheet. When I went over here and I added um, period, it just put those across the top, right? Now, when I went in here and I did age here, notice what it did. It went through and it added them all together. Well, that looks weird. I don't want it that way. It defaulted to some. So I can do this drop down. And I just want to know how many. So when I do count, it says I don't have, um, I only have one 16 year old in first period. Um, I have seven and eight and uh, 18 year olds in first period and so forth. And then when I add this down here um, at the end about gender, the numbers aren't going to change because this drop down is showing everything. But if I just wanted to know how many males seniors I have, and then you see that the numbers change. I could go back and do the same thing again, but look at females. So it's just pivot tables are just a way to take a large data set and go in and um, play out and tease out information that would be uh, that you would consider um, important to you. And again, it just takes some some uh, playing with it. I'm grateful that it doesn't go on the same sheet because that. When I first started working with these, I thought, oh my gosh, where'd my data go? But it's still there and it's still safe. This is just another way of looking at it. Will it automatically use those conditions? Yes, Melissa, as long as I've selected the sheet, um, it will automatically use those conditions for over here where we were color coding. Um, it'll automatically do those for um, for any others. Let's see, the, you see where it says B2 to F17? I only selected this, so I would have to expand my range right here. So I would expand the range and then yes, my color coding rules would work for any other columns. I just selected the, the small set. 
So basically those are pivot tables. Um, there's not a huge amount on there uh, for pivot tables and if they do ask you to do a pivot table they're going to um, give you a data set and they're going to say we want the column to be this, the um, row to be this, the value to be this. They're going to tell you what they want over here. So basically when you're doing pivot tables on the Google Certified Educator 2 exam, they're going to give you exactly what they want over here. You just need to, have to know that you have to go up to data um, and, and insert a pivot table and then do what they need to do over on this side. Uh, Add-ons for both. Um, we didn't talk a lot about it and then we're out of time, but I have more add-ons for uh, sheets than I do forms. And here's where you get a lot more use out of add-ons and it really depends on your purposes. Like this one, Autocrat, copy down and mail merge with attachments. This allows me to send CEU uh, certificates to people from um, surveys after a, a, a session is over. <clears throat> so all three of those have to work together and that's something I learned from, I think it was Eric Kurtz, um, Control Alt Achieve. But Doctopus was a different, um, it, it allowed you to uh, kind of organize and um, assess student projects in Google Drive. So I needed that for something else and obviously Chromebook inventory. So you can get add-ons through any of the apps by going to add add-ons. Since I'm in Sheets, you see how it's automatically going to take me to things that are um, useful in Sheets, but you can search um, if you're looking up here. Now, just because uh, you need to be careful, you need to always look at the what they're asking permission to, to um, use when you attach anything like an extension or an app. What are they asking to see? Everything under the sun, all the photos on your phone, everything in your drive, you just need to be careful. Um, but there can be some really great ones that you can use for um, sheets. So I'm sorry I know it went a little bit over, but I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any other questions um, specifically that we can answer, let me know. Kathy's still having um, tech office hours. So um, you can always get in touch with her. And uh, I don't see any other questions over here. So we're going to go ahead and end the recording.